Health Report and the Surgeon. Brought to you by Everett Bone and Joint. Everett Bone and Joint, the best choice to get you back in the game. Learn more at EverettBoneandJoint.com. All right, welcome back to Integrated Rehabilitation Group Health Matters. It is time for Ask the Surgeon with uh, Dr. Clay Wertheimer. Kind of hang around. And uh, so here, it's the time here when people are putting up the lights and taking the decorations down from the garage. Um, so, and, they, and they wonder why their shoulder hurts. It's, it's shoulder impingement, is that That's right? right? That's right. right. That's right. We're going to talk about shoulder impingement. Clay, um, set us up, uh, you know, anatomy-wise, the shoulder and the joint and why an impingement might occur. Sure. Well, you can think of the shoulder joint itself as a ball in a socket. Uh, the ball is really big and the socket is really little. It's almost like a golf ball on a tee. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to hold that uh, golf ball onto the small tee, you need muscles that, uh, that can stabilize that intrinsically unstable situation. So the rotator cuff uh, are muscles that live on your shoulder blade and sweep underneath the bony roof of your shoulder. And the bony roof is actually made up of uh, uh, your shoulder blade and where your collarbone joins your shoulder blade. And underneath that joint uh, where your collarbone joins the bony roof of your shoulder blade is where the rotator cuff muscles travel and then they form a tendon that inserts on the ball that holds the ball down onto that T. So what you have is the, 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 the roof of uh, that joint is actually called the acromial clavicular joint, otherwise known as the AC joint. Right. So basically what you have, you have a ball, you have this roof, and then in between that you have a tendon. Yeah, is that right? the tendon runs back and forth as it does its job rotating the ball, uh, which is one of its major jobs, and then holding the ball down into the socket or on that golf. Tendon. So it's, it's a, it's the, the tendons are stabilizing or sucking that ball into the socket. Right. And then in an impingement situation, um, what's happening there? Well, what impinges is the tendon actually impinges on that overlying bony roof, typically. Um, And so uh, when that happens, the tendon gets initially roughened up and microscopically damaged. And if it continues to happen, uh, then the tendon can get macroscopically damaged or the tendon fibers themselves can actually tear. And if it continues on, it can actually end up in a rotator cuff tear. And that's the most frequent cause of why the rotator cuff tears is this impingement process where the tendon is getting beat up under the bony roof. A lot of people say, well, I had a bone spur in my shoulder, and Mm -hmm. sometimes we'll say that to patients just to kind of explain. But it's usually not a bone spur so much as just the shape of that bony roof, and some people is pretty curved, Mm -hmm. and so it tends to be, uh, be curved down and dig in on the tendon. So some people, just by the nature of how they're put together, are more prone to getting this. Uh, impingement and tendonitis and rotator cuff problems than others. What are your thoughts on, um, you know, a lot of people ask me when they come in, how did this happen, you know, and why does it happen on my right side, not my left? I mean, yeah. how, how does it happen and what is the progression? Yeah, well, it can happen one way. You can fall on it. I mean, you can get on that uh, funky ladder and fall yeah, exactly. off on your outstretched <laughs> arm <laughs> and, yeah. and drive that ball up into the bony roof, pinching the rotator cuff tendon between the bony roof and the ball and damaging it. But more commonly, it's it's from overuse and what happens is you get this kind of vicious cycle because when that tendon gets bunged up then it stops doing its job as well and so one the of muscle its, shuts down yeah then. the muscle yeah. shuts down and one of the jobs as I tried to describe is holding the ball down into mm-hmm. the socket so it doesn't hold the ball down quite as much the ball sneaks up a little bit so there's even less room in there for the tendon and around and around you go in this vicious cycle tendon gets damaged because it gets impinged or scraped so it doesn't do its job as well ball rides up a little bit tendon gets squeezed and damaged a little bit more and uh, so you have to break that cycle and that's where your people come in uh, teaching our patients physical therapy Mm -hmm. and ways to stretch and strengthen those rotator cuff muscles so they'll do a better job to hold the ball down and sometimes where I come in because if that doesn't work uh, and the tendon continues to be impinged then we can go in surgically and make more room in there take away the bone spurs so to speak flatten out the the, uh, bony roof that's digging on the tendon or if the tendon has been torn through and through, repair the tendon uh, to get it back 
attached to the ball so it can do its job. So there's a couple ways. I mean, one is a traumatic event, like mm-hmm. you've fallen off the yeah. ladder, and the other one is just kind of overuse, overuse kind of repetitive yeah. trauma. Right. And again, just to reemphasize, as that tendon gets irritated, the muscle shuts down, so then you're kind of, a, like you said, in this vicious cycle. Yeah. So what would what would a, some uh, uh, symptoms? Uh, let's talk about symptoms. How would I know I had a pinch? Yeah. You know, the thing about the shoulder, it's not as wired as accurately to your brain as some other parts of your body. Mm-hmm. Like the tips of your fingers, if you have a, a splinter in your finger, you can tell exactly where that is and where the pain's coming from, right? But your shoulder's not so good. It's kind of like your heart. You know, people will have chest pain or a heart attack even, mm-hmm. feel it in their chest or their arm or, or their neck. Well, the shoulder's like that. If your rotator cuff is damaged, um, you can't quite put your finger right where the pain is. Typically, patients will describe pain on the top of their shoulder. Uh, sometimes it'll even radiate down to their elbow. Uh, rarely, if ever, past their elbow, but it's not uncommon for that rotator cuff tendonitis or impingement to hurt all along the lateral side of the shoulder and arm. And then typically it hurts more when you reach up uh, to get that um, uh, Christmas light up on the, the, the top shelf or put the angel on top of the tree, you know, when you're using you're your afraid to stand on the ladder. <laughs> you're afraid to stand on the ladder, so you're overreaching. So right. yeah. any time reaching above uh, overhead type activity is going to cause it to yeah. be painful. And of course, throwing motion. I mean, the, we see rotator cuff pathology in young people mm-hmm. who are throwers. And that's a whole other class of rotator cuff damage. That's not so much impingement as it is that cuff just being uh, stretched and, uh, you know, physically damaged from the process of throwing, which is such a bizarre thing to do with your arm. But for most of us, uh, the process comes from the impingement or that bony roof rubbing on the tendon over and over. And that occurs mostly when you're reaching above your head. Using your hand above your shoulder. So people that are at rest and not using their arm, are they going to have any symptomology? Uh, they might if it gets bad enough to where uh, once the tendon is damaged, then it releases uh, these tissue factors that turn on the inflammation mechanism in your body. And so then uh, patients will, you know, it'll feel red hot and swollen. And uh, sometimes they'll describe clicking or popping and snapping in there. There's a bursa sac. That's another oh, I want to talk to you about that. I wanted that I should add to the yeah. description. Uh, bursa is basically a fluid-filled sac that uh, protects the tendon and allows it to glide underneath that bony roof. And usually it's very thin and and, uh, and uh, gossamer-like. And but um, but when the tendon gets damaged or when that impingement process happens and that inflammation happens, then that bursa sac gets all thick and red and hot and a source of pain as as well. So this tendonitis and bursitis go hand in hand in this picture of impingement. In impingement, uh, yeah, I want to I want to clarify that. And make sure. So if you have a have an impingement, a true impingement, you're also going to have in, inflammation in the tendon and concurrently with the bursts. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, are these folks going to have pain at night? Are they going to be able to sleep through the evening? Or? Some of them will. You know, um, when I think about pain at night and hear that, I think more of a rotator cuff tear. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's classic. When that cuff tears for some reason, it hurts at night. It feels like a toothache in your shoulder. But for the tendonitis, sometimes, it you know, there's a whole spectrum. It can be just when they're using their hand above their shoulder and mm-hmm. reaching and really tugging on that part of the tendon that's been damaged, or it can be uh, even pain at rest. You know, if it's really inflamed and bad, they will describe pain at rest. I mean, a lot of people have pain um, with this if they lay on it. I mean, I've had a lot of patients say, I can't sleep on that right. side, I have to sleep yeah. on the other side. Yeah, um, that's true. So if, if I'm experiencing these symptoms and I, and I come see you as an orthopedic surgeon, w- what kind of test are you going to perform, uh, typically in, in an office visit? Yeah, well, first of all, we want to make sure it's not something even more serious, like a torn rotator cuff mm-hmm. or a pinched nerve in the neck, mm-hmm. um, it can sometimes be a challenge for us as uh, clinicians and therapists to distinguish a patient that has pain in their shoulder that's referred from a process in their neck mm-hmm. that could be a serious process, like a pinched nerve or mm-hmm. something going on near their spine, uh, versus uh, pain in the shoulder that's coming from a process right in the shoulder. So that's one of the first things we do is try to figure out, you know, is your neck okay? Are your nerves okay? Uh, Then the next thing we do is find out, okay, how much is your motion restricted? Uh, Because there's another thing that can give people shoulder pain that happens quite uh, commonly.
commonly, which is frozen sugar right, right. or adhesive capsulitis. And um, and so uh, impingement typically doesn't have a real restricted range of motion like a frozen mm-hmm. shoulder typically does. So we look for that. Uh, we look for uh, testing strength uh, to see if the rotator cuff is indeed still doing its job and able to rotate the ball out and in. If someone has a torn in the rotator cuff, they're going to be very weak, right? They, they will be, likely. If we isolate that rotator right. cuff, they'll be weak. And then we look for stability because sometimes people, when the, when that uh, ball tends to fall off the uh, tee and come out of the socket even a little bit, uh, that can create inflammation or irritation in the shoulder. So sometimes it can be a challenge to figure out, you know, is this really impingement or is it something else? And that's what we try to do clinically when we examine these patients in the office. Okay, and so a, a typical, um, you would you would most likely take x-rays, mm-hmm. possibly uh, one step further, an MRI? Yeah, usually on the first visit we'll take an x-ray because we want to make sure it's not something even more rare but mm-hmm. serious, like something wrong in the bone, like a tumor right. or arthritis, really bad wear and tear in the joint. All those things can cause shoulder pain that can act like impingement as well. So typically on that first visit we'll, we will take an x-ray of the ball and socket and make sure the bony anatomy looks okay. And then... And um, usually it's rest is the first thing, okay. you know, so to avoid that impingement. And uh, second is to get the inflammation down. So tell people to use heat, ice, anti-inflammatory medication to get the inflammation down. And then a therapy, um, stretching and strengthening the muscles um, will help because we think that will break that vicious cycle we were talking about earlier and get the muscles via the tendon to hold that ball down away from the the impinging bony root, mm-hmm. and that will promote healing. So those are the you know three big steps: first rest, then anti-inflammatory treatment, then stretching and strengthening. Okay, so uh, that's conservative care. And if that doesn't work, you folks are. Uh, do you ever inject these with cortisone? We do. That's a great question, and that's a next step in terms of uh, therapy. If that stuff doesn't work, then injection is very helpful for two reasons. One is, uh, as I tried to. Um, portray, it can be hard diagnostically to figure out, you know, what exactly is this? Because there's a lot of things that can make the shoulder hurt. Mm -hmm. And um, so an injection will help us diagnostically because what we'll do is we'll inject um, numbing medicine as well as cortisone, a very powerful anti-inflammatory in that area between the tendon and the bony roof uh, in the bursa area uh, where the inflammation presumably is the worst and see how the patient responds and if the patient responds, you know, says uh, you get the right great. mark then. You know that that's really the problem. Yeah. And uh, treatment-wise, that can be, sometimes you can hit a home run and cure it, make it go away. Mm. Um, so I will give up to two cortisone injections, no more. But two cortisone injections uh, can really be helpful. Okay. So um, the surgery for that, then, if it does come down to that, you know, this is probably another topic. But briefly, you, you, what you're doing is you're kind of decompressing that area. Yeah. How do you guys do that? Yeah, exactly. Besides listening to 1380. Right. So, <laughs> Um, what we do is uh, usually there's a step before that. And then before we take someone to surgery, we'll get an MRI test. Okay. Uh, that magnetic resonance imaging, unlike an x-ray, allows us to see the soft tissue. So we can make sure the cuff is damaged but not torn through and through, mm-hmm. that it's uh, bursitis and that the ball and socket, other ball and socket structures are okay. So after that, if the patient uh, has been trying for six months to get better, they haven't got better, they've had pills and rest and therapy and shots, their MRI shows tendonitis and impingement, then that's the time for surgery. And surgery often, uh, you know, 99% of the time cures them. And what we do is uh, use an arthroscope nowadays, uh, an instrument about the size of a ballpoint pen to mm-hmm. see, and through uh, two or three poke holes, put the arthroscope in that space uh, underneath the bony roof on top of the tendon, and then simply uh, flatten out the bony roof, make more room in there for the tendon, and take out that chronically inflamed bursa that's uh, also a source of pain around the tendon. Hmm. That's called an acromioplasty, and um, it uh, it usually works pretty well. It's, it's all good stuff. It's uh, I feel like I'm I feel like I should give him my copay right now. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> like a doctor appointment. Yeah, exactly.
had here. This um, is one thing you haven't had, though, is it? What's that? There's an impingement. Uh, no, I don't believe I have. <laughs> I've done a lot of stuff. No, I haven't had an impingement. Before we, before we go, we have a couple minutes. Um, Clay has asked the surgeon segment brought to you by Bone and Joint. Let's talk about uh, sports injuries. Uh, Greg Oden, who's been hurt his entire career. Yeah, had, poor guy. Yeah, yeah I really saw a yeah. picture of him in the sports page today, you know, just writhing on the court and holding his knee. And if you look closely at that picture, his knee looks kind of funky. And it looks funky because he uh, fractured his patella, um, broke his kneecap. You know, that's what the gangsters used to do to their enemies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That, you, you can't walk. Yeah. Because uh, your quadriceps, your thigh muscles, attach to your patella and then attach to your uh, shin bone. And it's through those muscles that allow you to walk and bend your knee and straighten your knee. And when you break the kneecap, then that mechanism is gone. You can't you can't hold up your knee. You can't keep it straight uh, or extend it. So um, he will have to have surgery to put the patella back together. And then they they said in the paper, understandably, his season's done because you got to let that bone heal. Mm-hmm. And then there's an extended rehab after the period of time that he'll have to be immobilized and keep it pretty quiet. He'll lose a lot of his muscles. He'll have to build that up. It'll take a whole you know. They actually season. they actually have to. Um, the way I understand. They have to actually put a plate or wire that kneecap. Ever. Yeah, usually what we do is put, nowadays we put screws through the kneecap to okay. hold the fracture fragments together. And then also uh, often a wire, too, and kind of a figure eight to what we call cerclage or wrap it up so to reduce the, the tension on it. And um, then typically we'll um, immobilize for three weeks and then start progressive mobilization, bending the knee more and more as the bone heals. Is it something you think he'll come back from? I mean, uh, will you, will yeah. He'll, he can. he'll be, he'll be yeah. able to play basketball? Yeah, he will. I think he will. Guy. It'll be, you know, he's got a good minimum of six months, more like nine to 12 months. So probably well, he's yeah, lose another get out year. And do what he needs to do. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a, a big man. Yeah. You yeah. know, there's a lot of torque right. on that exactly. joint. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I want to just real quick, uh, you know, just talk about Brett Favre. I mean, here this guy is, I mean, he's just <laughs> lighting up. Uh, now, looking back on this, you know, preseason, my understanding is, and, and maybe you know a little more, they actually released his biceps tendon. Is yeah, that right? that's right. So yeah. he, he, the reason he's able to play, he, he didn't really have any kind of repair. They didn't suture anything together. That's, that's exactly right. They, they, now, they did a, what's called a biceps tenotomy. Now, the biceps is your Popeye muscle, right? Right. And it has a tendon that it, uh, runs up over the ball and extends on top of that socket. You know, we were talking about the ball on the golf ball uh-huh. on the tee. Right. Well, the biceps tendon extends over the golf ball and inserts right on 12 o'clock on that tee. And we used to think that maybe it served to help hold the ball into the socket. Well, we know now through basic science and research and stuff like that and experience that it doesn't. And basically, um, in throwing athletes, the biceps tendon can get torn and it basically acts as a source of pain. And if you release its attachment to the top of the socket and let it just retract out of the way, then it seems to um, stop hurting. And that's what they did uh, with Brett Favre. And he's able to, I mean, functionally, he's able to still do it because he has his rotator cuff is okay. His cuff is okay. I mean, you know, his rotator cuff tendon apparently was fine, and the rest of his ball and socket is good. He doesn't have arthritis. And his labrum, the uh, cartilage rim around the socket that serves to deepen the socket and act as a bumper for the ball, that that was fine, too. That's so, crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's, he's lighting it up. Yeah. I mean, I think he might be the, the MVP. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, him and Kurt, Kurt Warner last night. Yeah. He, he, that, was, that was amazing. Yeah. So us old men have yeah, to do really that, right? Right. Stay off the ladder. <laughs> You'll live a, long, a lot longer. All right. Clay, as always, thank you very much. Uh, it's always a pleasure. The official orthopedic surgeon of, of <laughs> movies with Maury, actually, but of, uh, of Care, Care Radio. Uh, coming up next, it's...